Hi there, welcome back to the Auburn Allotment. So in today's video, I'm gonna talk all about the Brassica cage, which you can see behind me, which I first introduced in last week's plot tour of plot 12, um, but we built fairly recently out of mostly stuff that we already had, thankfully. We did have to buy some, buy some new stuff as well, <clears throat> but not too much, thankfully. Uh, I'm gonna talk a bit about like the actual process of putting it together. I'll show you the video of me putting it together and, and talk through why I did some of the things that I did. Um, and hopefully you find it interesting and maybe uh, you get some inspiration from it. And if you don't and you already have a Brassica cage, I'd really be keen to hear how you've done yours because uh, we wanted something a bit taller than this, really. It's fine, you can still get in there and do stuff, um, but we wanted something you can kind of walk into a bit more freely. But wood is just so expensive at the minute and any other like metal solution just seems to be really expensive as well. And we kind of need more than one, really. So. Really keen to hear how other people are doing their brassica cages or protecting their brassicas from butterflies and birds. Um, so if you do anything different from this, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I'm really happy that I recorded me filming this uh, a few weeks ago because it's been a really, really busy week this week for us. We've just given back the keys to our old property. And so this week has been mostly about making sure it's clean, making sure it's ready to hand back over. Uh, making sure it's empty and uh, we kind of left some of the stuff until the last minute so i haven't had a lot of time to do any other content this week so really happy that i actually recorded this and uh, hopefully it will be an interesting video anyway um, because i'm really happy with how it went together really it's really sturdy it doesn't move we've had quite a few windy days and it's still completely sturdy because of some of the ways that i put it together which i'll talk to you about uh, when i actually show you me putting it together so i think that is probably a good segue into actually showing you how i put it together Started by hammering, lightly hammering in some of these posts that we bought off of Amazon. These were the only things we needed to buy really. They're the same posts that we used for the trees that you can see on the right. Uh, I'll put a link in the description box below because actually they were not too expensive. You get a pack of 10 and uh, we only needed to use six as well for this project, which is quite nice. So I gathered up some of the battens that we already had knocking about. We had some left over from the seating area that we were going to use as the roof of the seating area on plot 79. We haven't got around to it yet. So by using the length of those battens, uh, I kind of figured out uh, down the bed where the next post should be driven in. And then I also used uh, some markers on the wood just to kind of try and keep the cage straight because on the edge of the plot on the left there, it's not a straight line. Uh, it's kind of at an angle, which makes it very difficult to figure out exactly um, how to get things square. So I used a marker, like you can see there, I was just marking it just to make sure um, that I'm getting it as straight as possible. Because it's really difficult to do just by eye uh, when, you're, when you're standing on the edge of the plot because it is at a weird angle and it doesn't really feel like it's right. But you just have to trust the markers that you've made on the piece of wood and just keep going. So this cage actually, it's not perfectly straight or anything, but it's fine. Um, it works pretty well and uh, without having to use a spirit level it actually came out pretty pretty well it does look a bit rickety um, <laughs> as i'm going along but there's a couple of pieces that i add at the end which really just adds some amazing stability to it which uh, is kind of the main thing that i wanted to show you really but i'll show you the whole process to get to that point so once i've got the post kind of in the place that they're going to go don't worry about the fact that none of them are straight because when you nail in all the wood at the top it kind of forces them to be straight it kind of pulls it all together. Um, so then, yeah, once I once I got the post in, I kind of just rested the battens on top just to kind of make sure that everything's sitting relatively flat when um, everything's in and it looks pretty good there. Obviously not perfect, but like I say, it does kind of pull itself together. And then it's just a case of hammering them in. So I didn't want to cut these pieces, which is why there's such a big overlap here, because I've done the post right to the end of the bed. So where the camera is, is where the bed ends. So the cage fills up the entire bed. Um, and these battens, they're the, exactly the right size for doing the roof on seeing area. So I didn't want to cut them because I still want to use them at some point. When we make a bigger cage here, I want to reuse this wood and hopefully use it for the seating area. So try not to cut any. So that's why there's uh, a few overlaps there, but then other than that, just hammering them in. And yeah, like I say, it looks a bit <laughs> rickety at the moment. Like the wood is very bendy. Uh, it's not, they're not hammered in very far into the ground, but as we go, you'll see it all starts to become a little bit more solid. 
And so once I'd had the side ones in, which I already done, that's how quickly this thing's going together, uh, I just measured some pieces of wood to go across the cage. Unlike the wood that we used for the edges of the cage, uh, which were all the same, these pieces of wood were kind of all higgledy-piggledy and a little bit different from each other because we were just using what we had. Uh, most of this wood actually was taken from uh, my mum's garden when we raided her garden for some stuff recently, um, but really nice to make some use of it already. These ones I didn't mind cutting so much because we didn't really have a plan for most of this wood, so uh, just cut them to the lengths that we needed to go across the cage. And just like the side pieces, then just needed to hammer these in. So just layering these pieces of wood on top of each other, not doing anything particularly fancy with the joins. The only thing to really watch out for, of course, is that you're not hammering a nail directly into another nail. But by this point, you've got so much surface to work with. You don't need to do the pieces right on top of each other where the nails might hit. So you can kind of uh, have a little bit of leeway. So you can see now, because I have measured them all to the same length, uh, a little robin there giving me a hand, <laughs> um, as I hammer these in uh, you can see that it starts to put it a little bit more square. It's still not completely level and do you know what, it does get a little bit better but I'm actually not too bothered by it. Um, it's still pretty good and the plot itself isn't level anyway so nothing is ever going to look perfect on this plot. Um, and it all just kind of comes together at the end and once you've got the net over it as well you don't really notice too much that it's not level. So once I got those uh, cross braces, I guess, on, I started to think a bit more about how to make it sturdy because at this point it was still really wobbly and I didn't want to hammer the posts in much further because at that point it becomes too low a cage. I already want a cage much higher than this, so uh, hammering the posts in as little as possible is kind of the goal. Um, and uh, to make it a bit more sturdy, I looked at putting some uh, diagonal cross braces in. Again, just laying them, layering them on top of each other, uh, trying to avoid the nails. The roof ones, they definitely do provide some stability, but it really, really started to become super sturdy when uh, putting the side corner pieces on, uh, the side diagonal ones, which I just start doing here. So while I use nails for most of this project, um, this end piece here, the wood was particularly thick and the nail just wasn't quite going in far enough so every time I was hammering stuff in it just kept popping back out so I used a screw um, but mostly I use nails for most of this project. Um, and then I, once the top ones are done, I started putting in the diagonal cross braces on the sides, on the inside. Uh, so I was originally going to just put some on the ends as you can see here um, but I figured since I had the wood available anyway uh, that I may as well put them all the way along every section and I'm glad that I did because it really really added a ton of stability. I didn't really want to be hammering the poles in more than I really had to because it was already quite a low brassica cage so every time you hammer the posts in further you're just reducing the height of it which isn't really what we want. So then I just started adding the ones in the middle and again just hammering these in. I did start to struggle a bit to hammer them in here uh, just because the angle of hammering them in was quite tricky. Um, one towards the end I really get stuck with and I ended up leaving it for another day and uh, in the end I used a screw for that one as well. I mostly though did just use nails for this project. The reason for using nails over screws is just to keep the cost down. We already had a big bag of nails so I didn't need to buy anything there and uh, the screws that we use are relatively expensive. They're ones that you don't need to drill pilot holes for because they're designed specifically to drill straight into wood and they've got little teeth on them that help uh, start the process without having to drill holes in advance. And I didn't really want to use any of those in this project, um, although maybe it would have made it a little bit easier and a little bit quicker, but it would have definitely put the cost up just a little bit more. This is the one that I get stuck on and eventually I give up. It's just the angle, I just couldn't get the angle right. <laughs> it was really difficult to hammer in at that angle. And then since I had some more wood left over, I decided to add some more diagonal pieces on the outside. Um, I figured since uh, this was uh, gonna be as sturdy as possible, hopefully to avoid it getting blown over in any storms that we have, I figured if I've got the wood already, I may as well give it another go and just add some extra cross braces on it.
and then it's just a case of putting the netting on. So you can see that as I'm putting this netting on, the frame is just not moving. With all these diagonal pieces, it just suddenly became rock solid. It doesn't move in the wind, despite the fact that we didn't have to put those poles in any further into the ground. So definitely the best outcome of this project was that the stability is very, very good, even if it's not completely level, which I can live with. So this netting, it was bought way before we actually ended up deciding where to put our brassica cage or where we were going to put the brassicas or how we were going to build it. So uh, it's not quite big enough for this area. But the good thing is the width of it now we know definitely fits over it. We just need a longer piece, which I did end up buying separately uh, from Amazon. Again, not too bad a price. I'll put it in the description box below. We were just so sick of uh, butterflies get into our brassicas that we wanted a nice big cage with some proper butterfly netting to try and avoid it happening this year. So in the meantime, before I bought it, I used an old piece of greenhouse shading netting, which is also very fine. The only problem is it's quite fragile. It rips very, very easily. So it's not something that I would be comfortable using permanently as a brassica cage, even though it can be quite cheap to get hold of. It just rips too easily. So not something that I'd recommend. And the netting that you can see in the middle of the cage there that is just bundled up, that's our old bird netting. And I got that out just in case I needed to use it, um, but luckily didn't need to because we had this piece of greenhouse shading. So I attached it to the other uh, butterfly netting with pegs. Really good hack actually uh, using pegs to attach netting to like bamboo sticks and stuff because it just stops the wind blowing it away. Um, really recommend doing it actually. They're really cheap and will carry like a pound. And then I just use bricks uh, around the edge to weigh it down to stop uh, the wind catching it, of course, and to stop birds from getting caught in it or from getting under it, in fact, as well. <laughs> um, normally, I wouldn't use bricks because it's just a place for slugs to hide out. Um, so in the end, I ended up replacing those with metal ground pegs, which is a really good way of keeping the netting tied down without giving the slugs too many places to hide. You can get them from most garden centers. So like I say, this is really sturdy. Like it barely moves uh, when it's windy, like because of these cross braces that I put in, uh, really quite happy with it. And it should be fairly easy to dismantle as well because I just use mostly nails as well. Um, but as you can see, it's like not really that high. So we can crawl in there and stuff and it's uh, completely fine. But actually it would be so cool if it was something up here. Um, but then obviously you need to buy more netting anyway. So, you know, there are pros and cons to everything. But if you're wondering about the uh, shading, shading netting on top, it's just uh, to keep the brassicas a little bit more shaded because they were starting to bolt um, and some of them still have bolted. Annoyingly, <laughs> we found this uh, netting up in a tree a couple of plots over. No idea how it got there. I don't remember it being that windy, but the fact that it was windy enough to take the netting off of here and into a tree and the actual structure itself is still standing completely upright. I think it's hopefully testament to how well they've put it together. Uh, so we just need to do the same on the other side of the plot now and then we can put our cabbages in there too. As I say, let me know if you have done something different. I'm really keen to hear uh, how you've done your brassica protection. Um, so let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, that's it for today's video. Um, hopefully you found it interesting. If not, let me know. And if you did, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And thank you if you already have. It means a lot to me. Um, but that's it for today's video. So from me, Sergio and Poppy, take the very best of care and we'll see you again soon.